Every day, 2,400 students and 200 staff enter these facilities, built through the Public Works Administration during the Great Depression, not knowing that harmful, ultra-fine particulate matter fills the air. Students are at risk even when they enter and leave school. And it gets worse. Markeppel borders the I-10 freeway with a Metrolink train that passes by 20 times a day, not to mention over 200,000 cars that get stuck in traffic daily. But what is particulate matter, exactly? According to the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, or EPA, particulate matter, also known as particle pollution, or PM, is a complex mixture of extremely small particles and liquid droplets. Particle pollution is made up of a number of components, including acids, organic chemicals, metals, and soil or dust particles. Particulate matter is formed when anything burns, whether it's a wildfire or fuel in a car. And mainly what we're seeing are the sources for the particulate matter here at the school are from the freeway and other car and truck traffic in the area. The EPA has two categories for particulate matter. Inhalable coarse particles that are between 2.5 and 10 micrometers in diameter, and fine particles found in smoke and haze that are smaller than 2.5 micrometers. Exhaust from power plants and cars are in this category. The third unregulated category of ultrafine particles which are smaller than 1 micrometer in diameter, is not regulated by the government but has been found to be the most harmful because of their ability to deposit in the lungs and cause irreversible damage. So what are the effects of this for Mark Keppel's students and staff? Our studies at USC have found that there are many health effects from children growing up and living near busy roads and freeways, either going to school or, or having your home located within between 500 and 1,000 feet from a freeway, children are more likely to develop asthma, and if they have asthma, um, it makes their asthma worse. I've lived in the San Gabriel Valley for the past 12 years. Considering that I was formerly in the track team in my sophomore year, um, it was very difficult for me to run. Um, I had to bring my inhaler every day. But Jimmy is not the only concerned community member. So how this project came about was a group of concerned citizens wanted to know more about the environmental concerns of the San Gabriel Valley. So they went to the Monterey Park Earth Day and they conducted a survey. From the survey results, we found that air quality was one of the biggest concerns. Over the past four years, I've kind of just thought of it as normal and I don't really notice it at all anymore. So I feel like that's probably the same situation for other people. You're kind of aware of it because you're living here on a daily basis. It just becomes the new normal. Despite our ability to adapt to these conditions, we cannot afford to be complacent. I believe that the air quality can be improved and it can get a lot better because right now, with the freeway all around us, the air quality is pretty poor. I believe that the air quality can be greatly improved because right now in the SGV, there are a lot of cars driving around. And with the carbon in the air, people can be absorbing a lot of intoxicants and that will really damage their lungs. Because the West San Gabriel Valley borders Los Angeles, air quality in the area is far below average. Monterey Park in particular has some of the worst air quality ratings in the San Gabriel Valley. So how bad is the San Gabriel Valley's air quality? Using a small handheld device called a P-Track, we measured ultrafine particulate matter at Mark Keppel High School. The results were startling. Particle measures doubled when we moved the device from inside a classroom to outdoors, where students eat lunch daily. Particulate matter quantities also spiked after school and when the Metrolink train passed the 10 freeway. But it's not all bad news. We found air quality to be significantly better in the San Gabriel Mountains, our community's hidden gem. When we went to the San Gabriel Mountains and tested the air quality there, the particulate matter levels were always lower than that at school, even better than levels within the buildings. We, as a community, should take advantage of a public resource that is available for everyone to enjoy. The air quality in the San Gabriel Valley should be of great concern to all of us. The best thing about the San Gabriel Mountains being part of the National Recreation Area is that 
you would have uh, a place of respite for the residents of this area. They would actually have uh, a place to go to so they can breathe that fresh air. And I think that they do need that break from the pollution of the San Gabriel Valley. Though our current situation may be bleak, there is much that can be done and many more simple solutions. Enforcement of existing anti-smoking laws can be increased. Spreading awareness of the much cleaner air available to all of the San Gabriel Valley can benefit us all, and more active air quality monitoring will keep everyone informed. The information we've presented makes it clear. Though the community should be concerned, the future is far from smoggy. Bettering the quality of our air can better the quality of life for all.